Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, August 22nd, 2018 edition of the Sand Center and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Xavier today took a look at another malware sample that used auto IT to bypass many controls that typically protect you from installing and running malware. Auto IT is a quite popular scripting language to automate various tasks. So it is not malware and it is not recognized, of course, as such by your anti malware systems. But in this case, auto IT is then used to download a DLL that is then actually used to conduct a number of malicious operations on your systems. When Xavier first came across it, it was not recognized at all by any of the scanners that are supported by VirusTotal. But since then, it looks like the antivirus community has caught up somewhat and most will recognize it now as malicious. The scripts involved were obfuscated or even encrypted and Xavier goes over some of the techniques used to reverse them. So he was able to figure out what this final DLL was that was downloaded by this malware. And if you are using the proxy traffic in order to load balance traffic between containers like Docker and the like, well, it's time to update and this is a very urgent update because traffic did include an API that was not authenticated and leaked the private key that you're using for TLS connections. A fix was released on Monday, but of course there are already scans underway to look for vulnerable servers. Apparently the onion was protected by a vulnerable traffic server and it's private key was already leaked to the public. Now, once an attacker obtains your private key, they are typically not able to decrypt any traffic that they collected beforehand or they collect just passively because of Diffie Hellman, which is used most of the time in modern browsers, which doesn't allow you to decrypt the traffic just by knowing the server's private key. But an attacker is now able to do a man in the middle attack or just to impersonate your website without any user realizing what's going on. A script has also been published that allows you to use Shodan's API to find vulnerable traffic servers. Usually this API listens on port 8080. And while we're talking about TLS certificates, there is another issue that was discussed in a blog post recently, and that has sort of been named bygone TLS. What this is about is that an attacker could register a domain name, then obtain a TLS certificate for it, which may be valid for up to three years if they actually bother to buy a certificate versus using the fairly short-lived Let's Encrypt certificates. Then they could give up the domain name and wait for it to be re-registered. Now, this of course may in particular be an interesting attack for a current event or something like this, where the attacker is able to snap up the domain name, then release it knowing that there are probably other people looking to register that same domain name. It could also of course be used if an attacker loses a domain name, for example, due to a copyright dispute. So the trick here is that the attacker obtained a TLS certificate while they owned the domain. So the TLS certificate is perfectly valid and it will remain valid until the end of the certificate's expiration time, unless the attacker is nice enough to actually have the certificate revoked. Now, the researchers that uh, pointed out this issue also released a tool that allows you to harvest certificate transparency data in order to find any sort of dangling certificates for domain names that you may have acquired recently. It also checks if there are certificates that had an expiration time that survived a domain ownership change. And looks like users of Debian Linux will have to wait a little bit longer or may never get the patches for the latest L1 terminal fault 
bug that was patched by Intel. The problem here is, well, not technical, it's legal. Intel changed the license under which it releases its microcode and now users have to agree to Intel's license before they install this microcode. Debian is strict open source and as such it refuses to ask users to agree to this license. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.